Oh, woe is me for how lazy am I. I want to play some Genshin as well. And then I'll see if I can boot up Game Maker and work up a prototype at the very least. Uh, taking a shower after this. And then I'm gonna go do whatever the fuck I'm gonna do in Genshin. And then Game Maker. And this was first happened. This grass wasn't here. But the set went through a bunch of provisions and nobody noticed before I was sent to render. Oops. Here we have frogs popping a lot of slimes. The frog is about to eat a slime when this alley swoops down and steals it, making the frog very angry. While most of the slimes in the shop are super happy dancing along with the frogs, this one up here doesn't move. He's just there, staring into the distance. So a few of these problems happen because we were still working out some of the kinks in our new pipeline. Usually when you're holding the shot, it's done in stages. So you start with the layer, which is where you put all the cameras and the characters in. Then that's passed on to the animators who hold the cameras. Then all the visual effects is edited, if it's needed. So particles, fighting simulation, blah, and a bunch of other stuff. The visit sample lighting to make it look all fancy and vibrant. And finally, it's set to render, where we get our final the cool thing about having it in these stages is that you can change something in an earlier stage and it will propagate all of the stages that go afterwards. So I can swap out a character in the layout with another character. And even if the animation is already done in the animation stage, it will obey. This also means that all of these stages can be worked on at the same time. Or at least that's how it's supposed to work. When we did this show, we were still working out some issues with that. And at some point, we decided that having this slime here dancing, like all the others, would be too distracting from the main action. So we hit it in the last stage. But somehow, it returned. It skipped all the stages and jumped back in at the render stage, leaving us with this slime at just thousand yards dead. <laughs> So throughout the video, this big chase in the background gets longer and longer, adding more mods each time. It always starts with the alley being chased by the frog, but in this one, the frog just isn't there. Also, there's a rabbit sat on a cactus in the background. That rabbit would be dead. Then we in the video, we see the frog strolling through a savannah and then through a snowy mountain vial. There's nothing immediately obvious about these two shots until you look at the sky to notice that the clouds are exactly the same. They've shifted over a bit. How do you send up these shots to glow for just this big solid object? So to make it look like a different set of clouds in each shot, bring the clouds in and shift it over to a random location using a very robust group of design. <laughs> So now I think of every in front of the camera. We did that with every shot. These two being so similar was just a huge loop. One drawback to this method is that you have to remember to do it. Later in the video, the clouds of these two shots are exactly the same. So here we have the Art Gelager, the Minecraft up to his throne room. He gets rudely interrupted by the crowd passing. And on top of that, the frog is the all but dominant. So he stalls down here and only to get blasted into the air by the stampede. So go through frame by frame, you can see that. 
loses its legs? It looks like once the crowd hits him, its legs separate and start joining behind him. I'm hundred percent sure why this happened. It could have been animated that way, or it could be that the freak was updated after it was animated and didn't carry no problem. This attitude on the other hand is about to become another problem. But it looks like we can't see it in the final shot, so uh, so so that's fine. Next up, the frog school takes us through a bunch of different items. Did you catch that? Six to eight have been seen in less than two seconds. And I have a lot of respect for them put on these shots because they were a huge amount of work. Each one you can set building, depth of rigging, animation, all the particles and the lighting, and they all just flash by in it. But it looks amazing when they're all played together. And then we work on some of these shots too. <laughs> but there's one issue with this very last one in the end. We have all these Enderman and Endermites dancing along with the music and the chase going on in the background. What's this? There's a rabbit just hanging out in the end with all these Endermen. The rabbit is part of the big chase in the background. We animated all those chases in a separate file, so the main scene file would be a super laggy. For some reason, the animation just didn't carry over. It's just here, chilling. Next up, the bombs in the chase eventually made their way into an ancient city. But as they get there, the rock accidentally causes every skull sensor in the city to trigger. Everything goes quiet. Darkness creeps in. And the world. So, the past two is that they all did fly. Except one. The zombie is still stood here, completely unfazed by what has happened. And if we go back, it looks like he wasn't animated at all throughout the entire shot. That's not the only problem with the shot. Just as the water blasts through, a light flashes onto the wall of the other mobs. And a couple of frames later, the hogman had this weird shadow all across his face. So this happened because the one had an set of lights, and as it gets blasted away, he flies right through one of those lights, causing this shadow. What makes these two problems a little more annoying is that I've been staring at the shot for a while, fixing another problem. So I really should have spoiled it, but I was preoccupied with... <laughs> Don't you keep was the absolute main of my week. Every time the shot was sent to render, there it was, floating at us. All we knew was that it was appearing at the animation stage, and we tried everything we possibly could to find out where the glowy cube was coming from and why it was there. Until finally, I got rid of the glowy cube. Look! Isn't that the end stage? Well, yeah, see? At this point, too much of our time and budget has been spent figuring out the problem. It's what those governments do when they have a problem. We covered it up. The next scene is in the Minecraft Legends world. Minecraft Legends is a brand new game with a whole new style. So our chase blasts through, interrupting these piglins attacking a village. This doesn't stop our frogs though. They stroll through while all the piglins are causing mayhem in the background. Now, there's a few problems in the shot, and there's a lot going on, so it's hard to spot them. Right here, there's a piglin trying to smash his face into the structure over here. But if it was just the hell is continuing right? I wouldn't see his face popping out of the side. This piglin rushes through and takes out a villager. As he does that, this zombie makes a sense one of the lights that was attached to him. My favourite thing about this shot is that the piglins aren't just attacking the villagers and the zombies, they're attacking each other too. So you see this piglin up here throws his face at this other piglin. Not one big sign. But if we follow the base that he dropped, it just falls through the ground like it's not there. As we get into the final stretch of the video, the alley races away from all the ones that were chasing it and bumps into Alex, who's just placed a sign. But as she stands up, her arm goes through the side. So all the mobs catch up, and Callie stops them and shows them that this whole thing was to bring them all to the train to go to Minecraft Live. They take a beat to think about it. I mean, they're all super angry a second ago. But who can say no to a free ride to Minecraft Live? So the frog starts feeling it, and the beat kicks back in, and then everyone joins in, and everyone wants that train ride. So the first problem with this scene, and throughout the entire video, in fact, is that the hobbling should be the sobbling. Well, except in the net. This is all because in Minecraft, a hobbling can't exist for more than 50 seconds in the overworld. And considering the power of the chase throughout, I'd say it's been a fair bit longer than that. And even if it hadn't been, he'd be violently shaped all the way through. Another issue with this shot here is on the rabbit. He had this line through his leg. This is a problem with his bone map. Bone mapping is used to add extra surface details on a model, and it's really convincing. But it's all an illusion. Here's a single polygon with a brick texture on it. 
It's pretty obvious that it's just a flat thing, but if we apply a one map to it, it starts to look a whole lot more convincing. Which I'd like to include one maps on the big animated videos because it adds a little bit more flair. It also gives a little bit more detail to catch the light upon. But maps can look great, but make sure they're on the right model. <laughs> it's so fun. Before we go into the final shot, I want to talk about silence. So, near the start of the video, the rock chases the animal through this snowy landscape, angering this goat. There's a sign in the background, and while the joke is fun, a few people are very passionate that the text on the sign should match the game plan, but be centered where it is on here. Now, I have my own extremely pedantic and not at all important feelings on Minecraft signs, and I'm gonna tell you about them. So, the graphic designer in me sees the texture on a Minecraft sign, like lines on a page. There's three of them. So, if I go into the game and place a sign down, Oh, oh, just a note, so it might be really hard to see, but this is what my character normally looks like in the game. So I've put a suit on for this video, so you can see me. Hey guys, look, my coffee's floaty again. <laughs> anyway, this is how it looks on a regular sign, which to me is the same as right like this on line paper. I am, however, going to give us a thing for this because this video is an official video for Project. So really, it should be how it is in the game, even if I have opinions on it. You care far too much about this. I do. Hey, Chrissy. Chrissy. Chrissy, wake up. Better not be about Minecraft signs again. Uh, in the final shot of the video, we have all the logs in the train making their way to Minecraft Live. This train is a recurring theme from all the videos we made, it's what links them all together. The shot has a couple of problems. The first one is here. On a couple of frames you can see a strange pink object in between the frogs and the goat. That's actually the frog's tongue. In the original layout we had the big frog flapping his tongue in the wind. But it looked a little bit weird so we put it back in his mouth and put it up. But one set of keyframes was left on the tongue, so as soon as we sent it to render, it reappeared. We spent a little bit of time asking it out of the final prop, but it was missed on a couple of frames. As the camera rises up into the sunset, or the Xbox Studios logo pops up, you can see some bright lights down here. A few people were speculating on what that was. Yeah, it's a missing jump. This world was so huge that we couldn't really play the file back until it was rendered because of how slow it made our machines. So what we normally do for shots like this is break the world up into chunks, so animators can only bring in the chunks they need. As we were turning all of them back on to the final render, this one was missed. So what you're actually seeing there is the sky coming through from underground. And finally, motion blur! It wouldn't be an element animation video without some motion blur issues. If you've seen our other videos in this series, you'll know that we usually do our motion blur after the renders are complete, and that comes with its own advantages and drawbacks. We're planning on using the full 3D motion blur in rendering for this, but there was a huge bug in rendering at the time, which didn't play nice with our rigs. So we had to fall back to our old phase. If you want to know why that happened, you can check it out in our other videos. But what that means right now is that we need to add a bunch more dates to the problem count. <laughs> So the Minecraft Live announcement trailer total comes to... Okay, you know what, considering everything that went into making this video, that's a win. That's, a, that's an absolute win. Of course, there are probably more problems in the beginning spot, so if you do find any of them, let us know in the comments. The main one pointed out last time was that I counted one of the problems twice. <laughs> I promise I've checked this one. So we've been asked why we make these videos, why we find other problems with our own work. Well, mostly because it's fun. We get to go back over our old projects and see what went wrong and where we can improve, and also make jokes about it. It's also a reminder to any creative people out there that there's no movie, video game, music, piece of art that is perfect. Except for these signs that have the text in the lines. Those are perfect. Anyway, that's it for this edition of Everything Up With Have Videos. If you guys managed to make it this far, and you didn't get bored, we might even make a part two. I want to give a big thank you to Mojang for allowing us to share this all with you. And also to our patrons here, especially our ultimate patron, the one. Hey, that was a big one. Yeah, it was a big one. That's a dusty. Guys, that's you. You've been gone for so long. For you, Steve, James, Oh, guys, can we time trap? Wait, wait, what year is it? 2023. <gasps> no, wait, that's right. We were only gone for six months. Yeah, but it is that time. That's like six decades. I've been here the whole time. We don't work here, James. Look, the YouTube blinked has already started to fade. <laughs> you need to fix this. Okay, so we have been gone a while, but that's because of the people. 
this year's Minecraft Live, but we've made some more videos for the show. You haven't seen that people listening to video yet. Head over there and show us some love because we put a lot of ourselves and a lot of work. We're going to be really good, dude. We're going to be making videos right here. No, it's worth it. I promise. Go watch it. Okay, that's really good. I'm still upset. And I demand more videos. The last time we covered Dinky Wong would be a Netflix video of the last year's show. But we actually have four more of those videos to cover. It's been a while. Maybe we should do a quick recap. Well, these all look great! No, no, that's it! Oh, wow. I've been waiting a long time, and you promised me a promise. No, you saw some. We wouldn't be making this video otherwise. <sighs> He's right. Aha! That means it's time to find out. Everything wrong with our videos! That's the rest of Minecraft Live 2022! Live. It's the best way you can learn about cool TV features. What are those? They're blocks of power to do. where they show us things that we can't unsee. And it's where we can vote for new mobs. And we're not going to touch that. Let's stay right over there. But we all know what the real attraction is. It's those silky smooth animations and used with the jelly that the animators are very much as into. Uh, let's jump into the first one. The pre-show bumper. Pre-show is a part of Minecraft 5 where we can see cool stuff from the creators of the community before the main show begins. Yeah. Do we see this little axle so while swimming from the wood? The little wig, then he jumps up to reveal the big community pre show logo. The second way that tree full of my cuts so much pants. Now you remember the tree from the end of the announce video. That's the same tree. And that links a few of these videos together. The first thing he was right here. It's a little has this line going up its stomach. I'm gonna let you in on an element narration which some of you might have already sussed out. You can only animate villagers. <laughs> There's so much villager content. So whenever we need to animate something that's not a villager, we just put a villager in a costume. This axe level, villager. This rock, villager. This tree, believe it or not, killing in the tree. Shh. Okay, let's take a look at what's really going on here. So the line down the stomach and all the glitchiness that you can see here is caused by something called Z. Which has fallen off a lot of Suggests. You've probably seen it before, especially if you play a lot of games. Let's take these village animals and clap down to single poly. <laughs> <laughs> now, if we move them into each other so they end up inside each other on the exact same. That's <laughs> great! <laughs> The reason this happens is because when your computer is rendering the screen, it draws all the background objects first, then it draws all the slightly closer objects over those, then closer and closer and so on, until we have the entire image. When it comes to objects like these, it doesn't know which one to draw first. Which one is in front? So some pixels draw one, and then other pixels draw the other. Maybe it goes with this the G mess. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little in the game, it doesn't have an easy fight, but in the animations today, any time a mob has a fat falling onto one of these features, give it a little bit of thickness, just so there's something there to catch the light. And without realizing, he introduced a polygon that will the axe of all stomach, nothing in this line here. Finisher! Oh. to the next one, take a close look at the train going by here. You go through frame by frame, even with the crazy amount of motion blur going on, just about to tell that one of the mobs are moving. They're just frozen in time. This isn't really the problem. The train goes past it so fast that you can't really tell. But I'm gonna buy this for this anyway, just because I like the sound of it. Uh, also, from this vantage point, you can tell that the train track just ends. You don't see it in the shot, so we just don't build it. This doesn't mean, though, that off to the side of every shot, there's just a teeny tiny, horrific train crash. It's okay, these are professional stunt mobs. They take their jobs very seriously. Uh, this one's not moving. Uh, let's go again! Okay, so that's the problems in this one. But the video is only 10 seconds long, so uh, moving on! After the pre-show, we jump straight into the main show, and that needed an amazing animated introduction. So the intro video we made is an epic ride through the Minecraft landscape, with the camera soaring alongside the train, carrying all the rocks. 
The black of the choke of the only way to see this now is on the feet of the hydrogen mess. So, let's split to the timestamps below. Okay, what's the problem? For one, once the train gets going and we pass through this cave, shoot through this metal, and because we're going super fast, we're going to have a lot of motion. But we also pass by these bees, which seem to be completely unaffected by it. If you've seen further videos in this series, then you'll probably have a whole bunch of things for motion blur issues at the end. But this one is different. Back in the announce video, we had a bunch of motion blur issues when the train was moving. Now, because we're using what we might call fake motion blur, which is added in after the main image is rendered, glitches can happen, especially when you have foreground objects and background objects both moving at different speeds, like in this video. So, to combat that, we rendered every single shot twice, or once with only the train and the pops, once with just the background. We applied motion blur to each of them independently and then combined them back together, which solved the issue for the most part. But we did set the motion blur for the background a lot higher than the because we wanted the train going extra fast. Shooting this shot is that the relatively sharp bees from the foreground render fly into the really blurry background there. Later on, the train comes to a halt to let the props from the front draw across the tracks. And this all takes place in a push room bias. The push room bias have all these little Michaelian spores blowing about. Pretty Frank here doesn't pay them any attention at all, even when they go right through his eye. We then go through another bio where the glow on this magma cube is all streaky. A bit later, we pass under the ocean, and then the Hallig flies up and bursts out of the water into the Minecraft Legends world. But he did it first out of the bottom. First out of the grass? Alright, so when we were making this video, Minecraft Legends wasn't released. <laughs> but we were able to get access to this village set that was used in some of the game scenes. The only problem was that there was no option of central council for us to use, and we didn't want to make any edits to this set because it was super opt in for the game. We didn't really have the time to do that anymore. So, with the splash happening directly on a transition between scenes, we thought I could still pass flying up to the floor if we covered up the evidence for all these splash pads. Awaken the Warden. 
Steve Wolf and the rocks is up and stops moving towards them. But when Alex and Steve run this way, they activate this skulk sensor. But this one really should have activated too. Eventually, the warden catches up and chases them into this cave entrance where they barricade it as fast as they can. What's this? There's two white cubes here. Aren't we into the floor? These were placeholders for the animators so they knew how far the characters had to run, but for some reason they got rendered too. The last issue on this video is during the end shot, where the warden digs through the wall to get to the characters. While we know this can't actually happen in the game, we're not going to mark it down, just because it's a very cool shot. But what we are going to mark down is the fact that all of the particles were supposed to fall off of the wall, but a couple of them just stayed stuck to it. So, the epic warden musical score comes to... I think we did that still on the The video, not the problem. The, the, the video. Alright, how are we doing? Do we have enough budget to do the last one? I think so. I'm just a face now. Wait, let's face I'm here. I'm just a disembodied voice now. Why does James a full body? Oh, I'm funded by the beautiful people of Patreon. Wait, that's not bad! It's a good Okay, so the final video we did was for when the main show was over. We had a few ideas for this, but we ended up settling on a little skip with Steve arriving late to the train. He waits at the track all day, but the train never comes. Then, in the night, a minecart carrying the frogs home slowly glides by, taunting Steve, giving him the biggest FOMO ever. Absolutely gruel. So, what went wrong with this one? Now, I know a lot of the issues we've picked out on these videos are extremely pedantic. And, well, we're not gonna stop now, just because we're on the last one. So, let's look at the frog speed. Dissected the minecart here, to the side here. Just completely unwatchable. Oh, how the veggie have fallen. <laughs> You know, I used to watch your stuff when I was a kid. This is disgraceful. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so the very final one is right here. There's a, there's a ball. There's a little ball embedded into the ground behind Steve. This one is a little bit reminiscent of the ghost cube. But we didn't even try to remove this one because we didn't know it was there. Right, let's pull up the scores. We forgot to do something. We forgot to do. It is now the warden video has zero. And that's because it has three full words. Three full words. Alright, so here's the final score. So, what do these numbers really mean? Well, nothing. They're almost completely arbitrary. You can't even use them to compare one video to another because there are so many other actors. This is for fun. And overall, this project came out looking phenomenal. There was a crazy amount of content, all the sets, all the characters, the visual effects. And we were learning new software at the time too. I want to give a big thank you to Mojang for letting us share all of this with you and give you a glimpse into what goes on behind the scenes. And like we've said before, this is just for fun. You enjoy going over our password and pulling it apart to find all the little intricate details that were missed, even if they're points. Another thing I want to mention is that we feel extremely lucky to have you here watching our videos. I know it sounds sad. I really mean that. It's always filled with support, positive feedback, and we've seen some other creators' comment sections, and some of them really aren't as fortunate as we are. What I'm trying to say is that it's always a really nice experience reading through everything that you get to have to say. And we do read all of the comments. Oh, did you read this one? Oh, yeah, I saw that. You see this one? Oh, hey, Dad, have you read this comment from Diary of Day 420? We don't always respond on YouTube, but if you want to come hang out on Discord, we're usually there if you want to have a chat. And finally, before we go, I want to give a cheeky plug to the Element Animation Minecraft server. But yeah, if you do play Minecraft, do join us on the server and be a part of our community. It's on all the versions of Minecraft. You can play on Pedro, Java, go play and survive the Minecraft wilderness, take part in our competitions and tournaments. Also, sometimes Dan comes on and turns your house into cake, but also realizes he can't undo it. But it's okay, because I'll just bribe you with diamonds until I figure out how to fix it. Anyway, if that doesn't scare you away, come and play with us. Well, that's it for this edition of Everything Wrong With Our Videos. Maybe in 2024, we'll do Everything Wrong With Minecraft Live 2023, just to keep everything nice and confusing. Thanks for watching, everyone. And thank you to our extremely important patrons, whose names you can see right here, all shiny. And of course, a big thank you to our ultimate patrons, Spy Forge and the Waffen Hawks and Plan. It's people like you that allow us to keep animating, and allow us to keep making videos, and above all, allow James to continue to exist. Yay! I'm <laughs> sorry.
Thank you. 